guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. And this is your Tottenham vs Chelsea match preview. Another tough game for Chelsea Football Club as we go away to the league leaders, Tottenham. Feels weird saying this, but Spurs have had a very good start to the season. We all know what they've been up to. They have been fantastic this year. They have played a lovely brand of football. And it's a good test. It's a good test because most of the big teams we have played this year have been at Stamford Bridge. And now we're going to go away to one of the big boys. It's going to be interesting to see how we perform. I'm definitely excited because it is a, it is a challenge. But I think Tottenham, if I watch their games closely, they can be beatable. They're not like prime Man City. They're smashing five, six goals every game. No, 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 no. They have weaknesses and we have the players to exploit it. In my opinion, we do. Uh, first of all, let's talk about injuries. So, Broya, apparently Posh said, could be on the bench. So, that's good. I'm just hoping that Broya can stay fit because we need him. I don't think Nico Jackson's enough. Uh, Chalaba still continues rehab. Bench of all same. Chukamaker, rehab. Fafana, of course, is out. Lavia, going to be a while. Modric is back in first team training. So, it's going to be interesting to see if he actually plays. And Christopher Nkuku, he's still going on his rehab. He's going through his programming. Uh, now the couple of questions I have regarding the team selection. So who plays at centre-back and what type of pairing will we get? Because at left-back, I think Kukure has done, done a decent job. So I don't think realistically Kukure should be dropped, especially for a game, big game like this. I think him and Kulisewski actually match up well because Kulisewski is not the quickest player in the world. So he's not going to be able to spin Kukure very, very easily. So I think that could be a favourable matchup for us. If I look at the centre-back, so we've got two options. We've got Kobo, Badiashile, Dizazi... Uh, silver. So you got four options for two. Now, of course, uh, I think Badia Shield had a very, 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 very good game against Blackburn. I thought it was very, very good with his passing, with his, with his instinct, with his... He felt like he was lighter. That's the weird thing about Badia Shield. When I noticed, I had this more time, time to think about this. And I was really impressed with Badia Shield. I thought he was lighter. I thought it was like he was able to defend wide spaces well. And him playing next to Zazi was brilliant for him because he knows Zazi inside out pretty much from his Monaco days. So I thought it was, everything was well. Everything was well. Uh, I think, look, but you still go with Koval. I think Koval's played more games. Koval's more match sharp. I think he has he has had an okay start to the season. Be it centre-back, near left-back. I think Koval has been good. Of course, he's got areas to work at. But I think Badia Shile, big game. You do not want to risk him. I did bring him on really in the last 30 minutes if you really want to. But it depends on the game state. And I think... There's no real need to rush Badia Shila in. Now, in my opinion, right now, if I had to give you an opinion, honest opinion, I think Badia Shila, the way he played, I think is a level above Koval. But I do think Koval has the higher potential. So, it's going to be interesting to see how those two help each other out. Maybe, at some point, we could see both of them play together. But I'm, it's going to be interesting. It's good to see we have so many options. I'm really excited to see who we get in the right centre-back zone. Once Fafana's back, Dezazi, uh... We need one more centre back for sure. Humphreys is there, uh, but I want to see if we can get Osman down Monday. Oh my God, that would complete the centre back. I think we would have probably one of the most complete cent set of centre backs. But that's a long way to go. Uh, right back, of course, is Silva or Dizazi. I think Silva will start. I think Dizazi played midweek, so I think Silva would start. Uh, Silva did not play any sort of part in that game, so I think Poch is going to use him for these games. Uh, right back as well. So Poch has said that Reese James is still going to be assessed. To I would honestly doubt he would play. I think Malagusto is more than competent enough to handle this one. I think he's a good player, especially against a team that knows they're going to be attacking more. Malagusto has so far shown to me a very, very good set of skills to be a one-on-one -on -one defender. I think he's going to play against Richarlison, so I do think he'll do his job. Uh, midfield, of course, I think Enzo will start 100%. Uh, he didn't start against Brentford, and we missed him. I hope that's clear to everyone. I think I say the next him. I think that will be enough to... Really challenge the likes of uh, Hoiberg, Basuma, uh, Sa. I think that would be a good matchup. But the third, ideally, I wanted to be Palmer, but it's going to be Gallagher, is what it is. And Postuna said something about, uh, I want to build an English core. I mean, this, the press conference asked him about building an English core. It was like, yes, we will need to build a core. We need to build a core with the culture of the country. I don't I don't really agree with it. Like, it's football simple. It's not about cores and like, Oh, if you're Italian, you're gonna get first priority. That it doesn't work like that. The best players deserve to play. Simple as that. Um. Okay. So attack wise, I think would you risk Modric in such a big game? I don't think so. It would not be wise. I think ideally, just play Sterling. You play Palmer. You play Gallagher, and you play Nico Jackson up front. Not many options. Uh. Still don't know what's going on with Chukwuemeka. It's been a while since we saw him. 
he was meant to be back, then he redid his injury. Ah, it's annoying. Now, of course, what type of game do I expect? I think this is the type of game where Chelsea will let Spurs have most of the ball. I think Spurs should have more of the ball, but I think Chelsea are going to wait for their moment in the game, and we're going to look to hit them on the counter. I think if we can win this game, it will give us a confidence boost. Then we've got Man City, then we've got Newcastle. I think after that, we've got Brighton, then we've got United, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. But so far, I think, look, Brentford 1 is a disappointing result. But it's. I thought we played well in 8 minutes. It's just about being consistent. And I think if we are able to execute a game plan that Pochettino is giving to these players, we can give anyone a match on the day. And that's been Chelsea's issue. Consistency has been the issue. I don't think we're playing badly all the time. Oh, like, this team's just rubbish. No. It's just like with the wrong. We just. We call we don't seize the moment and the opposition does seize their moments. I think that's the simple difference. Uh I think look, also I think Andrew Postacoglu, we all know that he's a fantastic coach, he's done a brilliant job at Spurs. I I wanted him as one of the candidates for the Chelsea job and he was in the list. So it's gonna be interesting to see how his Spurs versus Postinus Chelsea clash. I think it'll be a very, very exciting game personally. And it's a derby game, so I wanna see some fight. There's no real excuses like Oh, we were fatigued, we were that. No. It's a derby game. You give your 110%, even if you're playing on one leg, in my opinion. Also, Pochettino is going to go back to his old employees, so let's see how Spurs treat him. But he's probably someone that would cherish this occasion. I think he would love to go to his old stomping ground and do well. Maybe get the whole three points and come back home. Now, at the moment, if I look at the table, Chelsea would go on 15 points. Uh, if Newcastle do play Arsenal... So I think this is some good signs if hopefully we're able to climb the table up this weekend. But honestly, ideally, I just want to see a good performance. And I think, I'm hoping that Chelsea can get the all important three points. Now, what lineup would I go with? Of course, uh, Rob Sanchez has to start. Uh, Rob Sanchez has been Chelsea's number one. So don't think dropping him makes any sense right now. So Sanchez will start for me. I think Gusto right back. I think it will be very, very good against Richardson in that one-on-one -on -one duel. Kukure left back. I think Kobo, Diego Silva, that centre back partnership does kind of get me worried against Son, but we will see how it goes. I would go Caicedo, I would go Enzo, but I thought they play better as a double pivot than you play a proper number 10. But it's up to Podge. I think if you want to play a three man midfield, it can also work. But I would go Caicedo, uh, Enzo. I would ideally want to go with Palmer. I would ideally want to go with Madweka on the right. I would ideally want to go with Sterling. I think Madweka deserves game time. You can see his confidence is not on the... He's, he's not confidence. I think if he can put a good performance against someone like an Adogi, it would be great for his confi confidence if he's just able to get the few things right. So I would rather play Noni Madweka as he's more dangerous. I think Noni Madweka is, will be able to create much more havoc than Cole Palmer will. Cole Palmer's natural instinct is to come centrally. So he might as well play him in a central position. But of course we know... Gallagher isn't getting dropped and my issues. I will continue to say this. Gallagher should not be starting games for Chelsea. He's getting superstar treatment like Marcus Rashford is getting at Manchester United. And look at what happened there. So I hope Pochettino realised that Gallagher is nothing more than a squad player really, really soon because that will cost him his job. Uh, I will play Sterling on the left wing and I will play Nicholas Jackson up front. I think Spurs will have more the ball. I think they'll look, they'll look to be the dominant side. But I think... We will have our chances because the two fullbacks really invert. So the likes of Sterling, Nicholas Jackson, uh, Palmer, uh, they all should have a lot of the ball. I think the likes of Enzo will thrive in this game where they can, they will be able to ping passes because the amount of spaces that there's going to be available. So I think it's going to be a very good game. I think, of course, Spurs are favourites. I think Spurs are much more consistent. They've been doing well against uh, even the bigger size. I thought uh, against Liverpool, against Manchester United. So definitely not be easy. And we're going away to Tottenham. That's a big thing. Uh, it's not easy to go away into these big derby games away from home. So far, we have played Arsenal and Liverpool at the bridge. And so, it's going to be a real test of the mentality of these players. Well, are they up for the fight? All of that. I'm really, big. I'm just really excited because Spurs have had a good start. We had a not so good start, right? But if we can win this game, and if we can show that to the rest of the world that uh, Chelsea, we just, we just haven't been clicking right. But we can beat the big boys on the day. I think beating Spurs will be a real, real statement because they're top of the league, unbeaten as we speak. So I think if Chelsea can go to Tottenham, get a result, it will be so important. And I'm hoping there's no blunders because we have to improve the game management aspect as well. Because uh, against, of course, Arsenal, we blundered a two-goal lead. So I ideally do not want that happening again. 
you need to manage the game properly, you need to be street smart, you need to be able to make the right decisions, and whenever you do get your chances, you have to be clinical. Now, Nicholas Jackson, I wanted to talk about Nicholas Jackson, he isn't going to be the long-term number one striker. I think we all need to make it pretty clear that Nicholas Jackson won't be number one striker. It's nothing wrong. It's absolutely nothing wrong. Nicholas Jackson is a good player. Very good player. I like what I see from Nicholas Jackson, always. But he's just not that... He hasn't got that killer instinct. If you're watching us in him, if you watch, uh, if you're watching Harlan, Jackson isn't really that. Jackson's more for Jesus. He's a bit more for Alvarez. I mean, too far, Alvarez is actually much more clinical than Jackson, so... Nah, I think that's a bit of a wrong comparison. But I think he's more of a Gabriel Jesus mode. Where he'll do everything for the team, but that clinical edge is sometimes missing. And that's why I'm just really, really hoping that Broya can come back in as soon as possible, because Broya came in and he, he did the basic role. He scored a goal against Fulham. I thought against Burnley he wasn't so good, but I thought him being in the team made me much more confident that we would score a goal. Uh, who's going to be the most important player for us? I think, as we know, it's going to be two. Ideally, I want, want these two to be playing together as much as possible. Is Enzo, is Palmer. Enzo in the midfield, first, second, third phase. Palmer also in the second and third phase. I think those two could be a double threat. And I think that's what we need. Whenever I see Chelsea play, you only got one threat, Enzo. Enzo's man, man marked. The rest aren't able to do much. Gallagher, um, many other players. So I think if you can have someone like a Palmer, you want a second threat. You always want a second threat. You always want a third threat, ideally. But it's what it is. Ideally, I want these two to play together. I want these two to be in a midfield too. One, so they can rotate. So Enzo could drop into the DM role if you need him to. And that pivot. Or they could stay as a three-man midfield. Palmer could go into 10. It's loads more interchangeable. Uh, ideally, I want to see some good 1-2 football as well. I haven't seen much of that. I think at times when we have played some lowly 1-2 football, it helps to open up the opposition. And I think against a team like Spurs, we should be getting a lot of space, and especially in the final third, because they will be having a lot of men uh, in advanced position. Now, of course, the one player that we do need to be careful of is, of course, James Madison, because James Madison is practically a very, very important player for Tottenham. He can be the guy who can be collecting the ball from the centre-backs. He could be the one who could be playing at left wing. He's so key to making the system work and making sure he's filling in the right areas. I think James Madison... He's the one player I really, really hope that Chelsea are able to keep quiet. Caicedo, need to be on his case. Make sure Madison is not in the game. Because if Madison is, I think Spurs will become a better side. Because you got two threats in the Spurs side. you got Madison, you got uh, Son, you got Kulisewski to an extent. Uh, so I think it's going to be interesting. Now, Spurs do have an option. Brennan Johnson is back from his injury. So I think that gives them a bit of an option. If things aren't going well, you've got someone like a Brennan Johnson you could throw on who's quick. He's able to... Uh, uh, run its defenders nicely. Uh, I think, but honestly, I think Chelsea should be able to control the game. We got the midfield for sure. I think if I look at Spurs' midfield compared to Chelsea's midfield, on a man to man basis, we are coming out on top, in my opinion. So we should be able to control the game on the ball, off the ball, in my opinion. And I think we need to control the game. That's what I want to see. We want to have the control. Even if Spurs have 60% position, position, but if you know that we're having, we're letting them have in areas that is not going to be useful, no problem. Because that's what opposition teams do to Chelsea. So I hope we're able to do that to Spurs. And of course, we need to exploit their vulnerabilities, which I have spoke about many, many times. Spurs are not a very good team in counter-attacking situations. You can exploit them very, very easily. Uh, so I think that's something to look forward to. Now, on a score prediction, I think Spurs are in better form than us. I think they're in a really, really good run of form. I think it's going to be a difficult game. I think the Son factor, Son could... At any moment, come up with a brilliant strike. So I do think it will be a tight game, but I do think I do think Chelsea will put up a good performance. Of all, we put up a fight, and I think we thrive on these sort of games. Of what I've seen so far of Pochettino's Chelsea, I am going with a two-two draw again. And would I take a two-two draw? Yes. Here I might come on here if it ends two-two, might not be happy depending on what happens. But ideally, the two-two draw. Uh, Ideally, I want us to win the game. I think we'll make a real, real statement. But I think it's a tough task, especially from away from home. Especially against a good side like Spurs. Spurs are a good team. They know what they're doing. They are fantastic. So it's going to be very, very difficult. So 2-2 two, two draw. Very happy with that. Anyway, this was my Chelsea versus Tottenham match preview. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like my videos in general, please subscribe to the channel's volume. Well. in the comments down below as well. 
and leave me your predictions in the comments down below leave me your lineup for the game down below as well and i'll see you guys later for another video